What's up drivers, Bobby C here again. It's been a while since I've made a video. Um, what we're gonna talk about on this episode is when you lose power in the sleeper where your built-in refrigerator's not working and your lights aren't working, you don't have any AC power back there, we're gonna go over uh, the typical causes for this. A lot of you drivers ha have had this problem where you lose power in your sleeper. I know I had it on the uh, truck I had before the one I have now. I've got a 2015 um, Kenworth 660 Studio Sleeper. Um, the last truck I had was a regular Aero Cab. And from what I understand on these bigger sleeper trucks, there's actually two low voltage disconnects. And that could be one of your problems. It's either going to be your low voltage disconnect or it's going to be your mega fuse out there on the firewall by the engine. Um, the low voltage disconnect for uh, these bigger trucks are actually under the bunk over on the passenger side. You can't get to it from the side box. You have to actually take your mattress out and uh, get, get underneath uh, your bunk to, to get to this low voltage disconnect. It's a square box uh, with a hot wire coming in and a hot wire going out and generally it'll have a, a another group of wires smaller wires on a pigtail plugged together but i always like to do things uh easier and do the easy thing first because that's that's quite a bit of a project to do and i've had several people tell me that that, that hey hey bobby uh bypass the low voltage disconnect or, or replace the low voltage disconnect and I still don't have any power. What's going on? Well, nine times out of 10, that's gonna be your mega fuse out there. So we're gonna take a test light. I'm gonna show you where it's located and how to test it. Uh, because a lot of times it's the fuse out there and you're gonna spend all your time getting your mattress out and doing all that rigmarole to get to that low voltage disconnect under, under your bunk and it ends up being the mega fuse. So let me go show you where the mega fuse is and we're going to test it out. And if that's not the problem, then we're going to dig deeper. Well, all you really need to do to test this is a, your typical 12 volt test light. And where this thing is located is if you see those two red wires going into that black junction box uh, up under here, you just take that black cap off and we're going to test it. So let's go do that. As you can see, it's this box right here. And this cap comes off. I don't know if you can see this, uh, this little tab right here on the side. You just have to get your finger or screwdriver under it. And it just pops right off. And then, if you see, I'm going to get this other end, uh, the ground wire of this test light on, on the ground here. As you can see, that side's hot. Yep, there's our problem, guys. This fuse in here, it's a, it's a, it's a black flat, flat screw. Uh, it's not working. We're not getting power to the other side. And that explains why I didn't have uh, power on the fuse panel on, on, on that second row of fuses that go to all your fuses in the sleeper. So I'm gonna show y'all how to get this fuse out and we're going to replace it as you can see it has this black cover and it just pops off and it exposes that fuse this is the fuse right here well I got to get my hand over where it's not in front of the camera this right here is the fuse and it's a 60 amp fuse so make sure you don't put a 150 amp fuse in there because you might melt your truck down but uh, we're going to take that out it's a half inch socket, by the way. It might be metric, but it's got two nuts on both ends of that fuses. And these are neoprene nuts, so it's, it's gonna have some resistance all the way off. This is what it looks like with the nuts out. And this little fuse just slides right out. You can get you a screwdriver or something, but it'll slide right off of those that bolt. We're just gonna take this, this is what they look like. It's a fuse, and you put, put it right over like that, 
and you put your nuts back on, tighten it down, and put the cap back on. You don't need to put them on too too tight, just snug, where you got making good contact, about the same tension maybe uh, your battery uh, nut for your battery. Maybe not quite that tight. But we'll get these on tight, and then we're going to test both sides here. All right, got power, got power. There we go. Now let's go see if. Uh, our lights and our refrigerators work and now I can store me some bologna and cheese in my refrigerator and when I'm sitting at a shipper I can make me a sandwich let's go test it out first thing we're gonna check make sure a refrigerators working yep got a light going my lights are all working there we go well I'm glad this worked I'm glad we didn't have to tear this bed apart get to that bunk take the mattress out I'm glad it wasn't the low voltage disconnect see if you start with the simple things first then you don't do the hard thing and then realize it was the simple thing which I've done hundreds of times I've hoped this video helped you guys out comment in the comment section if you found this video helpful and any ideas that you might have for for future videos on repairs because owner operators out here have it tough and if we can save money and, and do it ourselves uh, it, it's a lot better off that would have probably cost me a couple hundred bucks to get a to get a dealer to do it for me you know by the time you get it in and then plus downtime downtime's more expensive than the repairs a lot of times so check me out on Facebook at DIY trucker and thanks for tuning in Bobby C is checking out adios